Hi, I'm Summer Bach, and I want to teach you how to make kimchi today. So kimchi, it's a traditional Korean ferment, and you can actually ferment it for even three to four days, and it's done. I tend to go a little bit longer because I like the more sour flavor, but it has Napa cabbage, carrots, green onions, daikon, which is a radish, onion, ginger, garlic. I'm using Celtic sea salt and red chili flakes that I ground up a little bit. So we'll give you the recipe under the video, or maybe even on the screen, you might see the actual recipe itself. Um, I weigh everything in grams. So be aware of that. I'm using a scale, but you know, obviously these are whole vegetables as well, and it's not an exact science. You can make a slightly different recipe, um, but the reason I weigh things out in grams, I have another video explaining this in detail, is that you can replicate it. If you weigh what you're making and you write it down and you come up with this amazing recipe, you can replicate that later. So let's begin. So I have some supplies here. I have my Vitamix. You can use a food processor um, or any other blender really. Um, I also have a crock. I'm using a picklet crock that has an airlock. We'll get to that. And I have a big stainless steel bowl. I'm a huge fan of this big stainless steel bowl. I use it every time I'm fermenting. So I'm gonna chop everything up and show you how it's done. Um, sometimes in kimchi, the whole leaf is used. So you could just peel back the leaves and, and use them whole with all the other ingredients mixed in. Um, I'm gonna chop it. It'll ferment a little bit faster that way. We'll do a whole leaf kimchi at some point. Um, so this is just like, I, I rinsed this off. I cut off, you know, the kind of funky bottom part. And right now I'm just going to take all the leaves from this whole cabbage, honestly. We're just going to use one cabbage in this one. Um, and I'm just going to start chopping them. It, it doesn't matter how thick or thin you chop it. You just want to have a consistent size. You don't want like super little pieces and then like giant pieces. Try to keep it fairly consistent. I'm just going to chop off these edges. These are not, they're not that pretty. As you can see, it's not an exact science. I think that's important. I really want this to be an easy process for you. So I really want you to try to make this, it's so cool. All right, so next up, I am going to add some carrots. So with the carrots, I think we're just gonna do these small matchsticks because when they're fermented like that, when you pull them out of the jar, you can like, Grab them with your fingers and eat these little bite-sized pieces. So I didn't peel these carrots either, which is nice to know. Some things you can peel, um, other things you don't have to. I did peel the daikon radish because they were a little funky. Um, they had just too many brown spots on the outside. And um, so yeah, this daikon radish is a huge root. I mean, you know, normally it's, it's like, it can be this big or longer. 
can also be much, much thicker. I chose the a little bit less thick pieces because I find that they're a little bit more delicate. They're less fibrous. So I am going to chop the daikon in thin little coins. Again, it's a texture thing. When it's fermented, it is delicious. Alright, there's the daikon. Next up, green onions. So I'm using a whole bunch here. Um, I washed them off. If you see any funky little leaves, you can go ahead and pull those off. And I'm going to again do these in a little bit bigger pieces as well. I love the green parts too because they ferment very nicely. Um, so probably just about one inch slices. All right. Okay, so now for the interesting part. Well, actually, I'm gonna do one quick thing. So we have the bowl of all of the vegetables that are going to be fermenting together. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and put the salt in. I'm using Celtic sea salt. And we have about five pounds of vegetables here. So I use three to four tablespoons of salt for every five pounds of vegetables. And that just depends, I say three to four tablespoons because it depends on how dense the salt is. But um, right now, I'm just gonna add this to it to start pulling out the moisture. Not all of it, I'm, I'm setting a little bit aside because I wanna taste it and make sure that this is dialed in. Um, but I want the salt to start getting all of the moisture out of these vegetables. runaways. All right, so you'll see that they'll start to glisten as the as the salt literally through osmosis pulls the water out. So the next part of kimchi, this is really important and this is what separates it from making sauerkraut or other kinds of fermented veggies. It's the paste. So you make this beautiful briny paste um, and I'm going to just use basically two onions here. These are yellow onions. I'm grinding these up completely. I really hope I don't cry. I think this is probably gonna make me cry. Um, so then I use ginger, and this is just with the skin on. It doesn't really matter because we're going to blend it up and you're not going to notice. Plus, there's a lot of nutrients in that skin. As much as possible, I try to leave the skin on, uh, but sometimes it's not possible. If there are funky spots on it, you definitely want to peel that. Most of the microbes are going to come from the cabbage anyway, so you don't have to worry about it too much. And I'm just chopping this very coarsely because, again, we're going to blend it all. The next ingredient is garlic. I have about five cloves of garlic here. I'm actually just going to pop them in full. All right, final couple ingredients. We have the red chili flakes. This is what makes it spicy. I think some people use a lot more than this. I'm really focusing on the ginger flavor in this, the onions, and letting that pull out some of the spices but we're gonna have this really nice red chili flake flavor. And then I'm gonna put the rest of the salt in here. That way it gets ground up and then it's gonna to touch every single piece of that cabbage and really start pulling out the brine. All right, let's blend it.
Okay, here we go. I love this part. This is really what made me fall in love with kimchi, was this paste. It's oniony, it's garlicky, it has ginger. I mean, it's delicious. And so I'm just going to pour this over it. You can use a spatula if you want. I'm using nature's spatula, my hand. Yeah, I'm going to start crying, so you're going to excuse me as I cry during the rest of this, this video for you. Woo! Oh my gosh. Strong. Open the window. So I took a little break to let my eyes calm down because that definitely got me all watery. Um, so let's see. I just had just a moment to let the salt pull even more moisture out. And what that does is it creates the brine. You know, what's really important when you're making any kind of lacto-fermented vegetables is that you have an anaerobic environment, meaning there's no oxygen. And what does that with the vegetables is the brine. Some people add water with salt in it and use that as the brine, but you really don't need to do that. Napa cabbage is so juicy. So is daikon. And we just added enough salt to make this really work. And I, I'm going to do what I recommend all of you do is you really want to taste it. Oh my gosh. That is so good. Mm -hmm. You want it, and with this one's a little bit harder. With most other ferments that you make with vegetables, you can really tell what it's gonna taste like. This one is so pungent with the garlic and the raw onion. It's gonna overpower it and make it taste a little too oniony to tell, but what you're checking for is the salt content. You want to make sure that you have the right amount of salt. I always say it needs to be as salty as a Lay's potato chip, but a lot of people are like, what are, I haven't had a Lay's potato chip. So I'm like, you're lying. I feel like everybody had to have Lay's potato chips when they were young. So um, look, how, look how moist this is. Part of that's from the paste that we made but part of it is just all the water really coming out of these vegetables. So I'm gonna put this in this pickle-it jar. And as you can see, there's a hole in the top of the jar. And I'm gonna just do a layer at a time. So you wanna get enough in there to where you can then tamp it down and get all the air bubbles out. This one could be a little bit spicier, but I, I like it. I like it the way it is right now. I sometimes go for milder ones. You could definitely double the red chili flakes in this one if you want more spicy. Okay, so now I have enough in here. I'm gonna go ahead and start getting the air bubbles out. goal is to get everything in this bowl into this jar and I think we can do it. You can see I'm pushing down pretty hard. That's important. You want to get not just the air bubbles out, but you want to really smash everything down so that it doesn't move during the fermentation process. The word ferment means boil. It means to boil. So that's what actually what's happening as things are fermenting. They're off-gassing carbon dioxide, and that carbon dioxide bubbles up. And if you saw a time lapse of this process, it would literally look like in fast motion as if this jar had boiling liquid in it. What's cool about kimchi is that during the whole avian flu breakout, they found that chickens that ate kimchi were uh, not contracting the disease. So I do think of kimchi as like a, like a flu shot, essentially, something that you can take to prevent yourself from getting sick when the people around you are, you know, catching the cold or getting that, that flu that runs around.
I myself have not had the flu in a very long time. It's probably been like eight to ten years. I don't want it though, because every time I get it, I've only had it twice in my life and it's the worst. Yes, I used to do, I used to um, play a game where we would bet with all the people in my classes, like, is this bowl going to fit in this jar? Can we get it all in? And we'd have, to, you know, a lot of people would say no, but almost every time you do end up getting all of the vegetables in. If you, if you once you're practiced at this and you kind of can see, you can probably get double the amount of vegetables into the jar. I mean, can you see this liquid even that's just like, coming out of here in the bottom and it's just really great. Stragglers here. Look at all that. Now you really want to pack this down as much as possible. They make little glass weights for this. Um, I'm using them in all the rest of my jars, so I'm gonna have to get some more. Um, I might put a little glass bowl in here to help kind of hold this down. Actually, you know what? I will use one of the ones that I got, the jar that I, I mean, the little glass bowl that I used for the salt. I'll use this one because it's red chili flake just to help. I just want to keep that held down just a little bit in the center. Um, and now I'm going to wash my hands so that I can clean this all up for you. I'll show you what you do. Okay, so at this point, I'm going to wipe the edges of the jar. Um, you really want to try to get as much of the vegetable matter kind of off those edges. It's really important. It will prevent it from molding. Not that mold could even really grow in this highly pungent environment with all the garlic and all the onion paste. And that's kind of what the salt does too. Like the salt is an antimicrobial. So we're, it, it's all working in our favor to not have mold appear, but it can still happen depending on what part of the country you live in. Some places have higher mold uh, content in the air. So sometimes you'll see um, some people struggle with mold. And in that case, you really do want to consider using an airlock contraption like this. This is just like a brewer's airlock for brewing beer. It has this little deal in the bob in here. And what it does is it allows the carbon dioxide to come out, but it doesn't allow oxygen in. So once all the carbon dioxide fills it out, all the oxygen gets pushed out, which prevents any yeasts from being able to grow on that top layer. So there's a fill line. I just poured it right to the fill line. That's just plain water. Put the little lid on. And I'm gonna actually rinse this whole jar just on the outside, um, rinse it with water to get any other goo that might be sticking to the outside. And at this point, let it go for three to four days, watch it. If you need to take this off and push everything down again, that's totally fine. It will quickly fill back up with carbon dioxide. Um, but this is gonna be a really cool process to watch. I mean, the colors are gonna change. It's gonna get more red as it's uh, fermenting because the color from the red chili flakes is gonna bleach or leach out into it. Um, and I personally will probably let this go two weeks and then start eating it. And sometimes I'll leave it out even, you know, just like in my pantry and start pulling from it. And then at a certain point, usually three or four weeks with the kimchi, I put it in the fridge. And with these, you can put the little rubber, you take this out and put the little rubber stopper in with a whole jar in the fridge, or you can jar it into little individual separate jars and you can give it to your friends, your family, people who you know love kimchi or people who you know need to try it. Uh, I'm so excited for you to try out this recipe. I can't wait for you to make some kimchi. So let me know how it goes, post pictures, post comments. I'm so curious. All right, I hope you enjoyed this lesson on making kimchi. Mm -hmm.